Russia is defeated on the southern front, Surovikin lines, Gerasimov's tactics collapse. The Zaporizhia front has been abuzz with news of Ukrainians breaking through Russia's first defensive line and chiseling away at a breach in the second. They're widening that breach at this stage to enable the flow of armoured vehicles and logistics so they can exploit it. Michael Kaufman, defence analyst and senior fellow at Carnegie Endowment, told the Kyiv Independent. The trend is in a positive direction, he added. Ukrainian generals are saying the first line was the hard part, the main, second line should be easier. The defence was counting on the Russians being able to retreat, said Viktor Kivlyuk, a retired Ukrainian colonel with the think tank Centre for Defence Strategies. But if there is no one left to retreat from the first line, who will defend the second? In many ways, these battle dividends are a function of the Ukrainians' courage and dedication. But it's Russia's baffling tactical choices that bear closer examination. Russian troops built hundreds of kilometers of competent, multi-layered fortifications, well-suited for a defense in depth, yet spend months defending in front of the line with most available forces. Not just defending, but counter-attacking with infantry fighting vehicles and artillery pieces they can't afford to squander. The Russians have constructed a defense in depth in the south of Ukraine, but spent most of the counter-offensive not using it. Kaufman said. Kiev Independent notes that in Zaporizhia Oblast, there are three main layers running perpendicular to the Ukrainian attack, with smaller support layers enhancing them here and there. Defences also run along major roads and encircle important towns like Robotyne, which Ukraine took in early September. Each line has layers of its own with trenches and strong points at the platoon, company and battalion levels, plus belts of minefields, tank obstacles and other hindrances. Everyone correctly predicted that Ukraine would send its main attacks at Melitopol and Berdyansk in an attempt to cut occupied Crimea from Russia and occupied parts of eastern Ukraine. Russian Army General Sergei Sorovikin ordered the lines to be built when he was in charge of the war effort and they still bear his name. However, the general fell from grace after the warlord Yevgeny Prigozhin's short and unsuccessful rebellion. The command was handed back to Russian Army General Valery Gerasimov, head of Russia's forces fighting against Ukraine. Under his watch, the Russian troops did not appear to use Sorovikin's defense in depth as originally intended. The Russians bunched up and held their ground, even trying to counter-attack and recapture lost territory. Most attempts failed, Kivlyuk said. Sorovikin wanted a classic positional defense, wearing down any advance over the course of several defense lines, while Gerasimov prefers an active defense with regular counter-attacks on the flanks, Kaufman said. In this version of events, Gerasimov may have been overconfident and overestimated what his force could achieve with active defense.